I first became Commissioner that I thought SAPOL had to do more in terms of public engagement. We've opened forums within uh, the country areas and metropolitan areas where Assistant Commissioners and Commanders have addressed um, people and spoken about local problems and how we would deal with them locally. And um, the next part of it, which has taken some time to develop, and um, we've had our Facebook page for some time and our news page, is actually been the development of the um, web pages, which we'll, you'll see today. Now, the aim of this is to provide local people with local news. And it'll be all the news um, in terms of police stories, crime prevention stories, um, issues of such things as roadblocks, um, warning messages, for instance, if there's an emergency, and an ability to communicate direct with their local police and convey um, their concerns about policing in the area or issues that they think police need to attend to. So these local pages are all about public engagement. In terms of media, um, I think there won't be, you will see virtually no change to the way we do business with media. What you will see are more stories that you may be interested in and want to follow up yourselves. So um, as I said, these, these pages will provide the communities in these local service areas an ability to have a look at what their police do. And they'll see everything from good news stories in policing right through to the issues of concern, such as breakings, um, uh, crime being committed in the area. People can actually join up um, and have an email provided. So if they provide an email address and join up and they can tick the local service areas or transit and traffic that they're interested in, we will send them an email about the latest story that um, has come up on, on that page. The other good thing about that, and as an example, so, for instance, say York Mid North local service area, York Mid North have a lot of shacks. So if um, shack owners generally live in Adelaide or outside of the, those, uh, those areas where the shacks are, they'll be able to get up to date emails about if there's any issues about, say, shacks being broken into and we're looking for certain people. Um, some people come back to the shacks three months later and don't even know they've been broken into. Um, so here's an opportunity now where we'll be able to convey information straight away and people can make their own determination about whether they want to come back and check or have someone else check or even ask police to check. Another example could be uh, the far north LSA. We have uh, a lot of queries, particularly over summer, and during uh, poor weather conditions about uh, whether roads are open, uh, what the conditions are like, and police officers take those calls generally on, on a phone call. Um, we'll now be able to put information up here so people can go in any time and check to throw out road closures and linkage, and we'll have linkages to DPTI to do that as well. So as you can see, um, this is a, the next step that SAPOL are taking in public engagement, and it's an area that we, um, we're very proud of. The, the development of it's been excellent. Um, the pages themselves, um, I think, will attract people to them, and they are an obvious way where we can get um, information out to the public and information into police. So I'll take questions. How much is all this costing? Um, yes, um, as I said, I uh, when I first came in, I think police really have to concentrate in two areas when it comes to visibility. Um, that's the geographic beat, and obviously everyone knows what that is, and that's the traditional beat that police work, but we also need to be in a cyber beat, and we need to be on that online environment. We know we have 500, over 500,000 people um, contact SAPOL or take an interest and at least check our sites and that's YouTube, um, Twitter, Facebook every week. So we know we've got a, a big audience there. And there are these, these people that um, would prefer to get their information by police, from police, by reading something rather than attending a police station or a meeting. So what we've done is increase these, the media and uh, public engagement area by three people, uh, one police officer and two non-sworn members. And these positions have all been taken out of areas that haven't been aligned to the front line. Okay, so how much is how much extra is this costing now? What, what's your budget increased by? Um, for we've done three? we've done it within our budget. So all we've done is move positions from one area to another area. So it's all within budget. From what areas? Where have they been moved from? Um, they have been moved from frontline positions. They've been positions that, for instance, we've reviewed the commissioner support branch and areas that have been support areas to the frontline police and determine that we've got far better value by moving to an area like this where we can increase our public engagement. And as I said, I, I consider these positions to be frontline positions. What was the feedback that actually triggered these web pages? Was it the police weren't personal enough and it was a big issue, a big picture sort of website, not sort of looking at individual issues? Um, 
Uh, yeah, it's not, not so much that. What we've, we've looked at over the years, if you look at um, right across the world, there's a, a general trend by police to put up information on websites. Um, and generally it's been an organisational website, which you, you've seen for some time now. Um, but not a lot of areas have actually taken it to the local service area. Um, and as I said, part of my, um, I suppose, strategy as a police commissioner was to improve the engagement with the public. And there's no point... Um, a corporate website which can provide so many a number of stories of significant interest to South Australians, but they don't. It doesn't delve into local interest stories, and it's the local interest stories that um, um, we're interested in in terms of making contact with that local community. So that's been the, the general driver of it. And as, as I said, um, you can't move away from it these days. There is the cyber beat now, and there's a, a geographic beat, and we need to be able to be in both areas. So this is quite different to the, um, the website, the link you launched a month or two ago, breaking down crime stats in um, separate LSA areas? It, it, yeah, with the crime stats, um, you, as you, you can see on, all the, on the front page of our, our new site, that has got the crime stats. So that was just um, what I'd call an addition to the site. And these sites will have, um, air, um, I suppose, contact points within those sites that will be specific to the area. And so each local service area may put different type of linkages onto that site. So the crime stats we're talking about were what I call just the content point of the uh, main page. So you say the money's come from within your, your existing budget. So are you going to tell us what the SA Police Media's budget is now? No, but every dollar's well spent. But do taxpayers have a right to know how much of their money is going into to things like this? Certainly. Um, I just didn't have the figures for me. I mean, we're talking about three wages on top of what we've already got in there now. Um, as I said, every one of those positions I consider frontline policing. So I haven't got the dollar figures on me, but I'm sure that we'll be able to provide you some dollar figures at a later stage. Does this in any way replace face-to-face -face policing in some of these country towns? No, it doesn't replace it. It actually enhances it. Um, because... If you go to the country areas, for instance, um, you've got a lot of people in remote areas that will never be able to get into the major police stations or even some of the smaller stations we have out there. And so um, their contact with police is sparse. It depends when a patrol might get out to a remote station, whereas this now will give them the opportunity to be totally in touch with their local police. And if they've got issues, um, they can obviously use a telephone, but they also can use this site to see what some of the issues for policing in the area and also contact the local area and, and provide information or, or their thoughts on policing. Through these websites, is the public now receiving the exact same information as the media? Um, well, not exactly the same information as the media. I mean, they'll be getting police information, but we won't be broadening it up to all the rest of the information that the media provides. But yes, they'll be getting um, all of the stories from the local service areas and as I said, the media can access all these websites and, and take those stories and develop them further if they want.